Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today we're gonna to talk about what I consider the most important move in the golf swing. Now, it's not only what I think is the most important, it's what Ben Hogan thought was the most important and what I see so many people do incorrectly. The golf swing has been taught to us over and over, rotation, rotation, rotation. Rotation is important, but not in the way that you think about rotation. Most people think rotation is this, because this is rotation. You're rotating, but that's incorrect. If you see what happens, I go back and I rotate, and what happens? The club goes this way, and I'm forced to swing left, which causes your slice or your hooks. Rotation, what they mean, means from the lower body. Now, the most important move is when you get to the top, you have to recenter. You see this little bump? I call it a little bump. You bump towards the target, and from here, you just lower the hands. Go to the top, bump, and then post up on this leg. So back, bump, and then rotate. There's the rotation. Bump, rotate, not rotate. This is death. When you get to the top and you think rotate, you're dead. Let's show it from this angle. Get to the top, bump, then rotate. You have to get that first lateral move towards the target. That lowers the hands and then you can rotate into the ball. If you just rotate from the top, you're done. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna have that mindset. I'm gonna show you that it works. I'm gonna play a couple holes, I'm gonna hit different shots, and you're gonna see exactly what I mean by bump and then rotate. We're gonna set the camera back here. This is a par five. It's the longest hole on the course. It's a dog leg right, and it goes. So you have to be on the fairway. Now you have a street right and out of bounds left. So it is imperative that your first shot finds the fairway. So we're here. We bump and then go. It's just a motion of this instead of that. Bump and go. Here we go. Get to the top, bump and go. Now I play a fade and that's a perfect fade. I started on the left, it rolls out there. It doesn't move too much, but I'm over the top. I always have been, and that's just my swing. So most people are over the top, and instead of trying to really correct that, which I encourage you to do, but if you're just starting out and you wanna play a little bit better right away, use that move where you bump towards the target and then post up on your front leg. Now, it's a feeling that you have to have. You don't wanna slide through the ball. Sliding means you never post up. Your front knee is flexed and it stays flexed throughout the swing. You gotta at some point get that front leg to post and then let your body rotate around it. So we've hit a driver, it's on grass and it's good. Now I'm gonna hit another shot I'm not gonna try to go for it because it's 275 yards. We gotta lay up. Now a smart shot here is to give myself 125 yards in. So I need to hit like a three iron, 200 and something yards. There's my ball. It's in a little bit of rough, but it's stand up. So it's not terrible. I'm gonna hit a three iron and I'm gonna get it up on the right side, that side. I don't wanna mess with anything left. So once again, we get here, we turn. Let me do it this way so you can see it. We get here, we turn, we bump, bump, and then post. Not slide through. That's a slide. See how this is never posted up? So we get here, we bump, and then turn. It's a lot to think about, but you'll get it if you practice it in your living room. So we're back here, 
Ball's in the back. I just turn, bump, and sweep. Turn, bump, and sweep. I'm not trying to do too much. Just want to hit the ball straightish, if not on the right side. 200 yards. Turn, bump, and sweep. Dead straight ball, right side. It's all I can ask for. I'll probably have 125 to 130 yards left. The microphone is all over the place. Excuse me. My cameraman, lighting man, audio guy, uh, the grips, um, the producer, the director, everybody for my videos called in sick today, except for me, which is all those things. <laughs> so you got to bear with me. But these are videos, I believe, for the average Joe, by the average Joe, just things that I've figured out over years and years of playing. And it's not going to hit right away. But if you practice them, you will get it and you will get the motion. I get all my knowledge from Ben Hogan and from playing. I don't listen to anybody else. Trevino's my guy too. But Ben Hogan to me is the greatest of all time. And there's no debating that. I mean, besides Tiger. But without Ben Hogan, there is no Tiger. So here we go. 150 is back there somewhere, back there. So I have exactly what I wanted, 120 yards to a front pin. All I want to do is get the ball on the green. So I'm going to take a 50 degree wedge and I'm going to half swing it and get it on the green. Now, I don't want to hit it too hard. So what do I do? I just take a swing to what I feel like is my waist. I swing to my waist, I bump forward, and hit the back of the ball. Swing to my waist, bump forward, hit the back of the ball. Swing to my waist, bump forward, sweep the ground. Good shot. It's short of the green. Okay, it's a front flag. I wanted it on the green. I want $20 million in my stocking. I'm not gonna get that, but I'm not past the hole where now I have to putt downhill and it's a disaster. So I've left myself a manageable birdie opportunity. Am I gonna make birdie? Absolutely not. Will I make par? I better. And that's this game, especially if you're shooting 99, 100. Pars are your friend. Don't be so aggressive. There is the ball. Let's take a walk up there so you can look at it. It's just short of the green. So it wasn't a terrible shot. I'm going to putt this because I can, and you should too. Every opportunity that you can see, I only have six feet of good grass. If it was trash grass, then I'd chip it. But the fact that I can keep the ball on the ground and give myself an opportunity, that's all I want. Now, I must, I must keep the ball here. I cannot let it get up here or back over there. I must keep it right in through here so I can walk up and tap in a par. So that just takes a little feel. The way I feel it, most putts, is if I had a ball in my hand and I was going to roll it over there, I wouldn't roll it like this and I wouldn't roll it like that. I wouldn't roll it like that. I would just go like this. And that's what I feel when I grip the club. I just go, roll it. Just roll it. Just feel like you're throwing the ball. Excellent. It's right where I wanted. I have a tap in for par. No problem. Bingo. Now that wasn't very complicated, was it? I hope not. I'm trying to make these so that you can see that golf is manageable if you respect your abilities. If you are trying to, like I could have gone for that shot from 270 yards and most people would hit a three wood and say, I'm gonna hit it as far as I can to be as close to the green as possible. 
Why? You're still gonna have another shot. If you can 100% of the time get it to the green, like literally 100% of the time, get it to the green and be safe, then yeah, go for it. But if you're like, I don't know, this might go into the street, this might go into the hill, take a lower club or a higher club, I should say, and just get it somewhere that your next shot is manageable. That's this whole game. It's managing. You are managing what you can do and what you can't do. And you will play better. Couple swing thoughts. Stick with the swing thought the whole time. I'm going to do one more hole. There is somebody ahead of me, so I might cut it and come back to it because I don't want to hit up on them. But that's your goal every time you go out. Pick a swing thought and stick to it. Don't start overanalyzing everything and picking your brain about everything that you've ever heard. That's not good because now you have too many thoughts and you know it. You get over the ball and you're thinking 27 different things. Dude, I'm telling you, that's a recipe for disaster. Pick one, one thing. And it could be a, like, you know, bump, post, sweep. That to me is one swing thought. I'm not thinking of my elbow and my wrist and my hip and my head and my neck and my back and my and my crack like it's just one thing and that is turn back bump forward and sweep the ground let's go over it again recycled tees love it i'm going to hit an iron here because this is a dog leg left you see where the cart is moving. Now there is a giant palm tree out there in the distance. That's my aiming point. So again, turn back, bump, do it again slowly, turn back. And my turn back, I don't even wanna get into this, but I'm gonna get into this. 99% of people, when they take this club back, they go like this. You see this rolling of the hands? Just, just don't do it, okay? This right hand, you need to feel this. Like I'm waving to the camera, okay? I wave to the camera. That sets the wrist from here. I bump and turn. No more this. Look at the club head. See how it's open? This is a disaster. What are you gonna do, close it all on the way? It's impossible. We're not that good. So I just think this. Boom, see how my hand is pointing back? I'm waving to the camera. So wave to the camera, bump and turn. Wave to the camera, bump and sweep. Wave to the camera, bump and sweep. It's great, it's right at the palm tree. Right at the palm tree. It's exactly what I wanted. Once again, my audio guy has decided to let me down. Sorry. Um, but yeah, keep that palm this way. Right there. See how the club face matches my spine? Very important. A lot of people are like this. You have nowhere to go but right field, deep right field, and it ain't coming back. So close it. Palm down, bump, and turn. Palm down, bump, and turn. Palm down, bump, and turn. But this left leg must post. See how it's straight? You must. That stops the body and fires the club through. If you slide through it, you can do all this right. And if you continue to slide, ball's going right. See how this is bent and weird and everything? So palm down, bump, and post. Okay? Let's go see what happened up there. I believe it was a good shot. I hit it well. It's in the fairway. That's, you know, good for starters. And I hit a three iron. This is a longish par four. It's not super long, but it's a dog leg left. And I play a fade, so you know what that means. Trouble. So I stick with what I can do. And what I can do is hit a straight-ish ball Maybe a little bit of a fade with a three iron. 
and I'm not off the planet. I'm consistent. That's been my biggest, biggest thing is getting over the fact that, hey man, sometimes you gotta take your medicine in order to save yourself. Because yeah, I wanna hit a driver and draw it nicely and hit it 300 yards, we all do. But it's not gonna happen. Maybe once or twice on the range, but out here in the middle of a round, no chance, and I know it. So I'm not gonna be stupid about it. Okay, so there's 150 right there. There's my ball, and up there is the green. She's still putting, so guess what? That gives a little bit more time to go through some things. All right, so we have 150 uphill. Um, 150 uphill, actually it's less than 150, it's about 140. I'm gonna hit a pitching wedge. I know you don't hit a pitching wedge 140, and people say that all the time. Oh, I hit my seven iron 150. Then hit your seven iron. I'm just, I hit what I hit. It, it's not that just because I have a pitching wedge it's an easier shot. You still have to hit the ball and you still have to hit it well. So whether it's a seven iron, a six iron, a pitching wedge or a 50 degree, you have to do it just the same. So once again, palm goes back, wave to the camera, bump, bump, and then turn. See how I'm avoiding this? This is the death move right here. So it's bump, bump. See how my hand just goes, I'm not moving my hand, but you see how my hand lowers? That's the club lowering into the slot. Turn back, wave to the camera, bump, then post up like this. And this is how you hit the ball with this bent wrist. You must. And from here, then you go. So here we go. Let's do it. To the back of the ball, there's one tree out there, spiny tree. That's what I'm aiming at. If I'm short of the green, no problem. I just made a par by being short of the green. I don't want to be past it, so I'm going to have a nice, smooth stroke. Take it back, point to the camera, bump, bump, then post. This is what it looks like. Just like that. Here we go. Point to the camera, bump and turn. looks pretty good hey it's short again because I don't hit a pitching wedge 150 apparently but that's okay I can live with it and I can not be in the bunker and not be you know by those trees I'm just short of the green can we see it if I zoom in there it is right there I'm just short luckily I've practiced chipping enough to be fairly decent at it and I believe that I have the confidence to get up and down for par. And if I don't make par, I make bogey. But guess what? I didn't make double bogey or triple bogey by hitting it out here or hitting it into the houses. It's all about maintaining the score and maintaining the rhythm of no big scores. Now this one, I'm gonna chip this one. Do I suggest you do it? Unless you're not confident with your wedge, I'm confident with mine. I have a 69 degree club and everybody goes, you're crazy, blah, blah, blah. That's fine. There's my ball. So it's eight yards to the green, okay? I'm confident with my wedge. If you're confident with your putter, use your putter. Nobody cares. The score is what goes down on the scorecard, not what club you used to get there. Remember that. You don't write down birdie and then you put uh, seven iron. No, you just put down birdie because that's what you made. So here we go. I'm going to hit a little pitch shot. It's going to funnel that way. I want to be on the right side of the pin so I can putt uphill. So I don't want to start it too far left. I'm going to take a wedge approach, wait a little forward, back and forward. There's no hinging, there's no rotating. It's just back and forward with my weight forward a little bit. Ball's a little bit back in my stance, just like that. And let's see what happens. Shooter! There you go. How hard was that? 69 degree. I told you. I love it. 
ladies and gentlemen thank you for watching i hope this helps i really do if you have any comments questions suggestions leave them down below and i'll try to answer them and here's to playing better golf